Welcome to the Hilliard Gates Athletic Center on the campus of Indiana Purdue at Fort Wayne. I'm Doc Ed Leonard along with Charlie Washington here tonight to bring you the game of the Mastodons versus the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. Charles, we're going to have an exciting up-tempo game tonight, I think. Every time you play the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, a lot of running, a lot of athleticism, a lot of up and down action, and that should fit right into the Don style, so I expect a very exciting game hey, tonight. Hey, Charles, this, this team, Kentucky State's got a player by the name of Little, and he is anything but Little. He's about 6'8", probably 300 pounds. He's got to be the biggest player we've seen in years, isn't he? Well, not only that, not only do they have Little, they have about three or four other guys averaging 18, 16 points, and a couple of guys averaging real close to 10 points. So a lot of scoring, the Don's averaging about 90 points a game. Uh, so we expect to light up the scoreboard tonight. Now, uh, Kentucky State uh, is uh, now, uh, let's see, 5-2 and two in the conference. St. Joe's at the top, 5-1. and one. Southern Indiana, 5-1. and one. We're right behind at 4-2. and two. Six teams bunched up there at the top, and... Uh, Kentucky State has handed it to us uh, over the last couple years. Well, and needless to say how big a game this is by what you just stated, Ed. Uh, big game tonight, Kentucky State. Uh, that, a lot of that athleticism has gotten to us a little bit, but uh, I think we have some athletes, too, in our uh, control tempo. That's going to be a big key tonight. Who can control the tempo? Well, we're also going to have to really go at the boards, and the Gibson boys and Ranky and Hans Strider, our big men, are going to have to control the boards for us, I think, to be effective against this team and to control the tempo. Exactly, and a pressure defense. If we can't control the pressure defense um, against their quickness, we have to uh, adjust and find some other way to control these thoroughbreds. Well, they the other night against Ashland, uh, they ran a 2-1-2 press, uh, and, and they'll probably throw a press at us a little bit tonight. How, how have we been at handling the press? Well, we are a veteran team, and that's going to be a big key. A lot of juniors and seniors, so we should not be um, – thrust or rattled by any kind of pressure defense. Okay, Charles, uh, we're, we're looking at some statistics here. Kentucky State basically plays about seven people. Four of their top five starters are seniors. Uh, however, they played two games uh, on the road here in the last three days and, and less than the last 72 hours. From your experience here as a player, how tough is it in the Great Lakes Valley Conference to go on the road and, and have these long road trips? Well. Fatigue can set in. Uh, it's, I guess it's kind of called bus lag instead of jet lag. When you're on that bus, sitting on that bus for a long time, and you get in here in a gym, a big game like this, sometimes you can get a little down, sitting down all day away from home. Okay. Uh, the other, some other things is that some people who uh, remembered uh, this Kentucky State team from past years, they, they've got a little guard uh, by the name of uh, Jermaine Crouch, number Couch, number 11, a senior from Grand Rapids. Last year, he wore these uh, Spaceman goggles, and uh, uh, he does a lot of things. Sometimes he comes in at the point guard and passes off. The other times, he's at the, uh, the shooting guard. Uh, so uh, Yeah, it'll, and it'll be a big key what Andre Walton can do con to control. That'll be quickness against quickness. So uh, couch against Walton, and uh, we expect a real good well, game. That, that's sort of interesting because they're both seniors for their respective schools, and they're both Michigan natives. So, so they, they go back about eight years against one another here. So uh, for those of you who might be watching and want to get out, uh, there's going to be a great ball game here at the Gates Recreation Center tonight. We expect a very exciting game, and please tune in, or if you got time, get here if you can. Okay, let's take it upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, the Mastodons versus the 10 and 4 Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. We expect a very exciting game tonight. Um, Mastodons tied with the Thoroughbreds in the conference. A big game tonight for both teams as they strive for the top of the GLVC Great Lakes Valley Conference. Charles Washington along with Ed Leonard bringing you the action tonight.
as we see the thoroughbreds getting prepared. Opening tip in 50 seconds or so. As we have a little time, maybe we can give you some stats and some updates on some of the players here. The All-American watch of Mr. Sean Gibson. Sean had a very good game, and as of going into Thursday night's game, Sean was first in the GLVC in scoring, first in field goal percentage, second in blocked shots, third in steals, fourth in free, free throw percentage, and sixth in rebounding. And Andre Walton, the senior guard out of Michigan. Andre, first in assist in the GLVC and fourth in steals. Sean Gibson, just a point. A tenth of a point ahead of Mr. Walton. Well, Charles, it's, this is going to be an exciting up-tempo game here tonight. And uh, for folks who have not seen Indiana-Purdue basketball, they ought to come out here to the Gate Center and see them play. Exactly right, Ed. And our own IPSW. First, the starting lineup for the visiting thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. At a guard, a 6'1 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 11, Jermaine Couch. At the other guard, a 5'9 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 12, Vondell Grimm. At a forward, a 6'2 senior from Toledo, Ohio, number 24, Cornell Forrest. At the other forward, a 6'5 senior from Watley, Alabama, number 34, Cedric Fuller. And at center, a 6'8 senior from Youngstown, Ohio, number 52, Eric Little. Head coach of the Thoroughbreds is William Graham. And now for our IPFW. from Saginaw, Michigan, number 10, Andre Walton. At the other guard, a 5'9 sophomore from Hammond, Indiana, number 21, Russ Marcinet. And a forward, a 6'1 junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 23, Scott Simmons. In the middle for the Macedons, a 6'8 senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 44, Dandy Doug Rinke. And at the other forward, a 6'7 senior from Lanesville, Indiana, number 41, Sean Gibson. Head coach of the Macedons is Andy Piazza. He's assisted by Dick Dumanian. And now, if you please rise and join in singing as we play our national anthem.
Okay. We at IPRFW are pleased to be able to bring you this broadcast of tonight's game. Our officials for tonight's game, as assigned by the Great Lakes Valley Conference, Chuck Weinkoff, Mike Bowen, Mike Fawcett. And here we are, Charles, about ready for the, the tip-off. And as we watch the Indiana-Purdue huddle, Don's ready to break. Uh, is it? Marcinek is, is a transfer from a Division I program, had to sit out last year, Charles. Uh, what do you really expect from him? I mean, he's, uh, I, I hate to say this, but he's the smallest player on the floor. Well, really, um, Russ is more of a, a one guard, uh, but when you have an Andre Walton, you, he's forced to play uh, the two guard. His style of play is more uh, suited for, a, for the one, the point guard position. But again, with this team and Andre Walton, you put him at the two slot. He's uh, very quick and penetrate, good penetrator. And here we are, ready to toss the ball up. Reinke, number 44 against Little. Reinke controls the tip. Down in the corner to Simmons. Simmons looking for a man to pass to into Walton. Uh, Walton, the ball stolen away. Tipped away, taken by Little out the couch. Couch across the line. Over on the corner, and there's a strong move. Oh, rebound. Little taps, taps once, little taps again. Little misses again. The rebound by Brim. Outside a three-pointer. No. Another one on the boards. We're getting killed on the boards here. There's, there's what we need, a little board work from, from John Gibson to Andre Walton. Brings the ball into the front court. Over to Gibson. We dodged Gibson. a big bullet that time, Ed. But oh, I'll, I'll tell you what, Ed, about five shots there. There's Reinke. He's got a... He has to make little work, Charles, I really believe. Oh, shot blocked. Reinke back with the rebound. Reinke with a shot. No good. The ball tipped. Oh. Both teams a little tight right now. Boy, they're, they going, they're going after it, but they're a little tight. A lot of contact so far in this ball game. It looks like the officials may let them play. Uh, that may work to some size for K Kentucky State. But not in depth. But again, if they don't call the fouls, they won't have to worry about too much depth because they won't get in the foul trouble. Graham out the top of the key, trying to set it up for Kentucky State. Into Forrest, underneath. Oh, good little play contact by Rankin. There. There's, there's a three-pointer by Jermaine Crouch. Here's a token, a token pressure in the backcourt on Walton. Walton guarded closely by Brim. Over to Shen, John Gibson. Gibson at the top of the key, over to Reinke. Reinke on the left side. Looks like the Dons are in that um, flex, flex offense. Marcinac trying to set something up over to Simmons. Simmons guarded closely over to, over to Sean Gibson. Gibson with a fake, Gibson with a move, Gibson with a shot, and it drops. Three to two. Again, uh, pressure, uh, pressure coming here by the Mastodons. It's very important how that pressure um, bothers the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. If it doesn't, their quickness can cause some problems. And Dale Brim, out to the top of the key to Forrest. He was the Great Lakes Valley player. Underneath Fuller. Fuller with a quick turnaround, too. Five to two. Walton across the line. Into the front court, guarded closely by Brim. Over to Sean Gibson. Gibson underneath to Ranky. Ranky backsided. Tied up, Ooh, a little contact there, I thought, Charles. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Ranky has to make that move, be strong, and make that move. We need Another some effective IPFW play. Another IPFW turnover. That's her second of the game, the fast break by Forrest. Seven to two ball game. Doug Ranky has to do something, make a move, make a quick move, and get that ball out of there to the uh, perimeter shooters. Well, they had good weak side help that time, and uh, okay, here is Marcinek, out the top of the key, guarded by Couch. Ranky Little's not going to come out and get him from there. There's another steal. Another steal by Brim. Brim all alone. He makes the shot. Nine to two. That's three turnovers, Charles, and three turnovers gets him six quick points. Not, can't take care of the basketball. We talked about how well the Dons took care of the ball uh, Thursday night against a less talented Bellarmine basketball team, but tonight they're not taking good care of the basketball. Well, it's real interesting here because with the two turnovers, Ranky. Uh, John Huntwright are sitting down here on the sidelines waiting to come in the ball game, and Coach Piazza is going to make that change very quickly. And actually, I think John Huntwright's style of play may be better suited against this Kentucky State thoroughbred team. Simmons on a drive to the basket, a nice move by Scott Simmons. 9 4. And now we'll see how the Mastodon's press comes in. There's timeout on the four. We have not only John Huntwright into the ball game, but also number 24. Sean Gibson. Shane. Shane Gibson. I'm sorry. I get Shane those. and Sean. I've had them both in class, Charles, <laughs> and I want to tell you there is a difference, but you have to look a little bit here. 
Long pass up court. Back up. Back out the floor. Still on the side of the couch. Couch guided by Simmons. Grim with the standard of the ball by Andre Walton underneath. Pass to Little. There's Little. Up hard. Oh, a good rebound. We've got a foul on Little. That's their first foul, Charles. Uh, I think we push it inside and make Little work. Well, there's a difference. John Hanstrader, uh, a little more aggressive than Doug Ranke. He's yes. going to go after it. Whereas the Ranke may be a little more passive on the rebounding end and also on the offensive end, where Hanstrader is a little bit more aggressive. Here's Andre Walton into the front court. Out to the side. Hans Ryder, and, and you're right, Hans Ryder uh, took that outside and he says to Little, you come on out and play me out there. And a turnover for Kentucky State. A little bit of pressure bothered them. Here we are, 15-44 uh, to go in a half, 9-6. In a fast-paced ball game. Sure, and you generally John Hanstrader just hit about a 12-foot jumper. You usually don't want a player to come right into a game and take a shot, but when you get that kind of a shot, that easy, you got to take it. Andre Walton underneath the Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder out to Shane Gibson. Again, though, got that ball out quick to the perimeter players. Here comes Jermaine Couch with the ball, guarded by Walton. Forrest up on the top of the key, back to the end. Brim traveled with the ball. I thought that was a little, uh, about a half step there, Charles. Uh, uh, we'll take those. Yeah, we'll take those. I don't those. see Coach Piazza complaining. <laughs> uh, Coach yeah. Graham from uh, Kentucky State uh, wasn't very happy with either his player or the call on that one, but that was a, how do we say that, a little, little step travel. A little stutter in between Gibson there. The top underneath there. There's Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder misses the layup. And Hans Ryder commits a foul, and 34 Fuller goes down hard. We have a timeout on the floor. Very hard. He got up quickly, though. <laughs> I think I'd still be down there, man. <laughs> I, I, that would be a rest time. I, I thought I was a little worried because it looked like a part of his head caught that floor. Hans Ryder's first foul, the first on Indiana Purdue here in the half. John Hanstrider got open on the inside and missed the shot. But again, you had some aggressive play from John Hanstrider, and it's making a difference, early difference right now. Now, this, this Kentucky State team, Charles, has, uh, has beaten Indiana pretty well over the years. So, right there, shot by Lewis, about six feet away, and, and it, was, uh, it was short. And he may, he may tie at least. Gibson, there's the work. Obviously, the strategy now is to work the ball into Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder, a nice pass to Gibson. And it's Sean Gibson on a great assist from Hans Ryder. And Charles, your perceptions here about the about the up-tempo and the aggressiveness of Hans Ryder here is real demonstrated, really demonstrated here tonight. He's making a difference right now. Graham over to Couch. Couch sure makes a difference in a year without the year without space man guy. Right? He was making a statement last year, I thought. Look at Hans, Hans Ryder and Forrest Fuller are really going at it. On the drive, Graham gets his second basket of the game. He has four underneath Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder, ooh, blocked by Little. Looked like some pretty good body contact there. That's a good block by Walton. There is not much you can do about that. Hans Ryder caught the ball, did not put it on the floor. Went right up with the left hand. Not much you can do about it. Great block by Walton, we think. Could have been some body contact there, but it wasn't called. Andy Liebert, number, number 20, came in the game for the Dimes. The difference between these two ball clubs, Charles, is uh, Coach Piazza will use a few more players. Kentucky, Kentucky State, you basically use about seven ball players. And that could mean, uh, you know, this style of play uh, and the up tempo style of play, and plus the fact they play two games. Oh, foul! Wow, foul! Looks like a number 24 Forrest. That looks like uh, that's going to be his first, the second on the team. Cornell Forrest foul, the team second. And Sean Gibson will be at the line for two. A place he's very familiar with. <laughs> Leading the league in free throws. Taken. Sean's a young man that, in my opinion, could have played at the next level. Oh, yes. Uh, no question about it. Uh, in uh, some of your smaller Division I conferences, um, your MAC conference, uh, Missouri Valley. Sean could have been a great contributor to some teams in those types of conferences. Second free throw is good. 11 to 9, the Dons trail by two. Pressure, strong pressure here. Looks, oh, could have gotten about the five second count. Grim dribbles all the way down, and they let him have the shot. And Hans Ryder with a big rebound, Charles. And here comes Andre Walton. Going to try to push it up. Drives. Over to Liebert. Liebert, oh, 
Lieber with an offensive foul. Too bad because the pass off the Hunsrider was good, but Lieber with the foul. That's his first, Charles, the team's third. It's a good idea by Andy. Strong, uh, strong drive to the left hand. Tried to draw some contact here and then dish off. But that's what happens when you get up in the air, you don't have anywhere to go, and defensive Toby players Joseph, step right in. Toby Joseph, a 6'1 senior, just came into the ball game. He played well for them last year, very well, when they came in, into this gym last year. Outside, that man crouched with another three. That's his second three of the game, 14-9. Well, he's making a statement that he can hit it from out there. Walton into the front court, Walton down to Gibson. Gibson guarded the... Closely in the corner, over to Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson back to Walton. Walton at the top of the key, looking for someone to pass to. There's Sean Gibson over on the right-hand side to Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder, Hans Ryder, is it going to go? It goes in, Hans Ryder. Great substitution they used the big man, by Coach Piazza. They used the big man Little here to uh, be the outlet man on the pass. There's a rebound by... Gibson. Oh, Andre Walton. There's a long pass down. They've got a two on one. Oh, and he missed the shot. The rebound and by number 11, Couch. He's got eight points, Charles, here in the first seven and a half minutes of the ball game. And Indiana Purdue did not get back down court. Two and one. The shot was missed. Sean Gibson put great pressure on the shot, but none of his uh, teammates came down to give him any help. There's Sean Gibson over in the corner with the ball. Back to Andre Walton. Uh, Walton over to Shane Gibson. Gibson to Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder up, Hans Ryder the shot, blocked that time by number 34, Cedric Forrest. Here we have a three on two. And a basket by Cedric Forrest. 18-11. Blocking foul on Little. When he gets a blocking foul, it's and a block. That Charles is his second foul. 12 minutes to go and a half, and Little has picked up his second foul, and he's going to come out of there right now. And that will make a difference. Coming into the game is Eric Dugan, Eric Dunnigan. Eric Dunnigan, a six foot six sophomore from Detroit. He's two inches shorter than little Charles and 100 pounds lighter. So that makes a fine statement here. That clears up a lot of room down there in the paint. Now to be interesting to see how Jeff Smithy responds to the quickness of this uh, thoroughbred basketball team as he enters the ball game. Number, number four, uh, Jeff Smithy. A veteran. You missed it. Gibson on a nice left-handed move and it circles out. Basket interference, I assume, on Indiana Purdue. Somebody's hand got caught in the net there. I think it was Doug Ranke's hand got caught in the net. And that caused well, on the, the floor now for the Mastodons. We have Scott Simmons, number 23, 21, Marcinac, uh, number four, Smithy, Joe Sean Gibson, 41, and Ranke back in the game. And a rebound to Kentucky State. Out to number 11, Couch. Couch hits another three. Couch 11 points in the ball game, 21-11. Well, we might say Kentucky State 10, Indiana Purdue 11, and Jermaine Couch 11. <laughs> Off the side, short for the shot. Hits the front of the rim by Scott Simmons. And there's number 20, Joseph. Joseph shoots. Ranky with a rebound. Rebound comes off to Marcinac, long pass to, oh, it, that should be an intentional foul. That could, should be, Charles, an intentional foul because he went to the body. And Sean Gibson goes down hard and into the post there, the IPFW post there in the middle of the gym. And, uh, we're going to look for some assistance here in a minute. Sean's a big foul tough on kid. Fuller, and they did not call that an intentional foul, Charles. If we had that on replay, uh, I think you'd see that the contact was essentially a tackle around the shoulder. And that should constitute uh, an intentional foul. The perception there is if you come from behind and not perceivably going for the basketball, there should be an intentional foul. And he clearly came from behind. And, and Gibson, uh, Gibson, Gibson had a beat, not a play, a good long fast break pass. Nice hand for Gibson as he walks to the free throw line. He is the Mastodon's thoroughbred player. That's the fourth team foul on the thoroughbreds. And then referees are checking for blood. Uh, Gibson, if there is blood. Uh, Gibson may be bleeding a little bit. And, and if so, and he has to come out of the game. If so, the new rule instituted this year, he has to come out of the basketball game. That's 
the coaches get into a little verbal confrontation. I don't know what uh, Coach Graham's problem is there. Sean Gibson will have to go down. The new rule instituted this year, if there's excessive blood, he has to come out of the game or get a new uniform. Yes. Well, if there's blood on his uniform, Charles, he has to replace the yes. uniform. And he has to, uh, the bleeding has to stop. Now the question is, whose blood is it? <laughs> uh, it looks like we're going to have a discussion because he has to pick a number that that is not taken by one of the players. I don't know if they can reach in there and find a number 41 for you know, Gibson to play. We're going to have some players here somewhere along the line, and it's going to happen this year in a key game. Uh, in key situations. In key situations where the jersey's not going to be readily available. And uh, this is our real first time out of the half. And hopefully this type of situation can benefit the Mastodons. Right now this break, the momentum clearly in favor of the uh, Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. Hopefully this stop of action can sway the momentum towards uh, the IPFW Mastodons. Well, Charles, one of the things that we can see the scoreboard, you were a gambler. You'd go buy a lottery ticket that had a lot of ones. Here we stand at 11-11 in the first half. 11 minutes, 11 seconds to one half. 11 points for Indiana Purdue, 21 points for the guests. And number 34 with his first foul for Kentucky State. Sean Gibson back with uh, number 41, and here he is at the line to shoot again. The first of two, and it's good. Gibson now two or three from the line, two from the field. That's his sixth point of the game. Andre Walton back in for, for Marcinek. Two, one, man. One throw. Gibson to shoot the second. And it's good. Pressure by the Mastodons. Kentucky State's handled at this last several times down the court and got some easier buckets. Oh, there's a steal by Simmons. Simmons from the top, he's got to make the shot. He goes up for the rebound. And they're calling a foul on somebody. I think that foul is going to be on Toby Joseph. That very well could have been on Simmons. Yes, Toby Joseph. It is Toby Joseph, his first foul, the fifth on the team. The Don's ball out of bounds. Number 23, Simmons will inbound it and that along the baseline. And that conceivably, conceivably could have been a foul Walton on Simmons. Side. Walton back to Gibson. To Walton. Walton shot for three, doesn't go. There's your main couch. We, we've got to have pressure on couch. Couch is sitting there with 11 points. Big number double zero. Sidney Boyd was in the ball game. Kind of wildly went to the basket, but found some way to get it up off the glass without getting a charge or traveling. Ranky back in the ball game. Top of the key to Gibson. Back to Ranky. Back to Smithy. Back to Ranky. Ranky down low. John Gibson wide open. Great pass. Good pass from Simmons. Gibson's ninth point. 23-15. Ten and a half minutes to go in a half. Double zero. Boyd. Boyd over at the side. Derek Dunnigan. Toby Joseph, number 20. Now Jermaine Couch. Couch back over to Toby Joseph. Toby Joseph drives into the lane, shoots over Ranky and hits the basket. Toby Joseph's first basket. Andre Walton down the left side. Up to the top of the key to Sean Gibson. Underneath the pass behind Ranky. Not a Don's, very good pass that Don's time by fourth Gibson. turnover. And there's a, they reciprocate with a, a quick pass. Not a good pass. Thursday night at the Dons at four turnovers at halftime. They, well, have, they, have, four they have four tonight, Charlie, in the first ten minutes of the ball game. And if you look at each turnover as being a basket, it's, it's a two-point game rather than a ten-point. Dons down by ten. Walton into the front court. Guarded by Couch. Token pressure. In there, sets a pick. In their defense, though, Ed, this type of game will constitute more turnovers. We've got to make those four-foot shots. And there, no basket. They called the hold on, on the somebody. Floor. Thing against Boyd. The thoroughbreds get a break there. That foul on number uh, zero, Sidney Boyd, his first. Uh, cost us a basket. Should have been a three-point play. That's our sixth foul. We'll shoot the next one. 
So instead of getting a chance at a three-point play, you just get the ball out of bounds. And if you don't score, that's a six-point turnaround. But, There's a three but we got seven. the three anyway. You bet. 25-18. Oh, great steal by Gibson. Three on two. All the way. Smithy, oh, not even close on that layup, Charles. I think he, um, and then he commits the foul. I think he heard footsteps or felt hands waving yep. up around that rim there. Well, I guess not. Frankie picked up the foul. That's uh, the third in the dimes. As you see it on the replay there. Well, we had the advantage. We had three on two. Uh, uh, Smithy took it to the hoop. That was all started by a great save by Sean Gibson. Great defensive play. Number, number 20 out there. 53, I think that foul is going to be on Dunnigan. And Scott Simmons, I think, will go to the line. And the Dons are shooting one and one with 8.51 to go. And that could play a big part in this uh, first half, Ed, as the Dons have three fouls to give before uh, Kentucky State shoots free throws. That foul was on Dunnigan, his first, their seventh, as you said, Charles. And here we go, uh, Gibson back to the line, shooting the first of one and one. There's his tenth point of the evening. He's four out of five now from the line, two from the field. Sean has been to the free throw line and made more free throws than any other player in IPFW history. So it's no secret that he's at the line. And there's another one. Five out of six. He was a teammate of Platt, Pat Graham, and you can see some shooting similarities yes. there. Oh, there's a quick break from the thoroughbreds. And oh, could have been a foul underneath. Again, a Walton all the way. What a move. And we missed the shot. Great tip off by Gibson Rankin. with a rebound. Gibson, that was Shane Gibson with a shot from three, no. A lot of good things happened, 25-20. The Don's down by five, Toby Joseph, throws this over to Brim. Brim out to the top looking for someone to pass to. Finds Forrest in the corner. Underneath number 34, Cedric Fuller with a left hand hook, Sean Gibson. I don't know who the foul is, it must be on, is it Sean Gibson? Must be on Sean, the way he's looking. <laughs> That has the old the foul was not on me look. Sean Gibson's foul, his first, team's fourth. Hans Ryder comes in, Sean Gibson takes a rest. And number 34, Fuller's going to be at the line for two. As you see, I think Pat Murphy about to enter a basketball game for Doug Rankin. Now you're going to see a lot of rugged, aggressive play down there in the paint. Is a Murphy and Hans Ryder, the Bruce brothers. The Bruce brothers. Themselves. I'll tell you, Murphy's a graduate of Bishop Winger High School right here in Fort Wayne. So uh, Murphy and Hans Ryder, uh, uh, we don't give away any size in there, particularly with Little on the sideline with two free throws. First, first free throw by Fuller is good. He'll shoot the second. That's the first time they've been at the line. 26-20, the Dons trail by six. Fuller, second shot is up and through. 27-20, Andre Walton brings the ball up court. Again, good pressure by Brim. They'll probably go Brim and Crouch will be on him. Oh, underneath to Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson moves. Oh, the ball doesn't go. Murphy, with a, or Hans Ryder with a save to Andre Walton for three. Aunt Walton shot, no. Good save by Scott Simmons. Andre Walton the oh good play. Great pass. Walton the Walton the Hans Ryder. A lot of good things happened there, Charles. And something a very little thing, the great peel back uh, that Shane Gibson made to get open for that shot that he did miss, but a great move to get open. And and, and the, the tips and 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 looking for an open teammate to get the ball to. Couch it back in the ball game over to Forrest. Forrest with the shot up a hop and out of bounds. Mastodon's ball. Trailing now by five, seven and a half minutes to go in a half, 27-22. And that play all ended with why we all know Andre Walton leads the league in assists and he's 11th in the nation. Great pass to Hans Strider to finish. Mastodon's using essentially a double stack now, moving out to the side. Somebody's moving, there's Simmons. 
Simmons, Simmons can take it to the basket to Murphy underneath the Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder goes up and the ball was tipped out of bounds and Hans Ryder's claiming somebody got him across the hand. That's great post to post action right there by Hans Ryder and uh, Murphy. Simmons with the ball out of bounds along the baseline and the basket down basket. Oh Hans Ryder. Simmons. Oh we've got a travel. Somebody could have called a foul on that one. And as you might be able to hear the fans didn't really like that particular call. That's the Don's fifth turnover of the half. Well, that whole sequence got set up by not so great of an inbound entry pass. Kind of a pop up at that time. Oh there's a steal. Oh Simmons. Simmons got it right across as he went up by number 20 Joseph that's going to be his second foul and number 23 Scott Simmons should be at the line shooting too. Scott Simmons playing very aggressive basketball tonight and that's a that's a type of play that you have to uh, get from most of your players to get a win uh, against these Kentucky uh, State Scott Durham. Simmons is a six foot one junior out of Grand Rapids Michigan West Catholic and he has he showed a lot of good good old fashioned hustle. At the line, the first one is up and it rattles around and comes back out. Let's go, man. Let's go. Shoot one. Here we go. Mastodon's now five out of seven from the line. Simmons' second shot is up and it's squish. Four point ball game, 27 23. Here comes some pressure from the Dons. Number 12, Brim with the ball. Brim. Brim over to Toby Joseph. Back to Brim. Good pressure again by the Dons. Oh, wide open. They found Crouch, and Crouch misses it. Good hustle. Oh, they call Shane Chunch. Shane Gibson for being out of bounds. I have to look carefully here, Charles, with my trifocal sometimes up here. I just don't see quite as well as I used to. The Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, that sequence, I uh, had stopped the ball, picked up the dribble in two of the worst spots that you can, and the Dons just about took advantage of it both times. Crouch again for three, and that was, he misses that one. Oh, there should have been Crouch over the back. Look at him jump. Number 20 with a three. That's Toby Joseph. 30-23. And Crouch should get more than just a regular assist for that. That was his bucket right there. Toby Joseph would get the three points, but that's Couch's basket. Well, Crouch missed the shot, kept it alive, kept it alive, and passed it over to Toby Joseph. Four three-pointers so far in the ball game by the Thoroughbreds, only one by the Mastodons. There goes Simmons. Another turnover by the Dons. Got underneath, got in trouble. Brim, Crouch. The fans wanted some walking in there when he was in the lane. Crouch again. Hans Ryder with the rebound. Looking for some help to pass to. Here he comes up with the Simmons. He certainly looked like he violated some of the uh, normal rules of basketball, but I think maybe the referee saw too many things to call it. Gibson in the corner. Gibson to Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder wheels. Hans Ryder's shot is short, and the foul is going to be on Cedric Forrest. No, Cedric Fuller, I'm sorry. That's his second. That's the ninth on the team. John Gibson and Russ Marcinak coming in for Pat Murphy and Scott Simmons. Simmons leaves with six points, Charles, and uh, he, he's played a real heady floor game. Yes, played very well, aggressive heady floor game. Number 30, Lloyd Sutton, into the ball game now for the for the Thoroughbreds. Coach Graham getting some uh, pretty good play uh, out of number 50 there uh, in place of Little uh, while he sits on the bench. Hadn't really lost a thing. Yes. Well, normally this Kentucky State team, the book on him, they normally play about seven ball players, and he's got nine guys in the game tonight. The Dons have hit 10. There's Hans Ryder with his seventh point of the night. What? Free throw shooting has kept the Dons in this ball game, Charles. We're down 30 to 24. Hans Ryder's second shot is swish. Pressure in the backcourt. The pressure has given the thoroughbreds a little trouble. Ooh, Hans Ryder, a little, uh, little activity there. 
little extracurricular push by <laughs> by Shane Gibson, Sean Gibson. Hans Reiter's second foul, the fifth on the team. I think Fuller was trying to persuade a flagrant foul call there on Shane Gibson. I guess. Uh, that's the fifth team foul. Fuller's, uh, Fuller's the only thoroughbred who's been at the line. He hits the first. He's now three out of three from the line. 31-25. Second shot is up and it's good. He's four out of four from the line, eight points. Sean Gibson and Andre Walton. Walton brings it up. Charles, the interesting thing is that six thoroughbreds have scored, only three Dons have scored. He's got, we've got to have better balance scoring and get other people in and make those four foot shots. There goes Andre Walton. And Andre Walton gets two. And that's, we just said now that's four and that's the guy we got to get it from Andre has to get to the basket and not only make some good dishes but score some baskets too. Another turnover. That's the sixth turnover for Kentucky State in the ball game. Hans Ryder will inbounds. Well we have the Gibson twins. Number 21 Marcinac Andre Walton. An open pass to Sean Gibson. Sean takes it up. Sean with a left hand. Good left-handed move. That's Strong a, move. That's a great move for any young guys out there. That's a great move to avoid the charge there. The defensive man had position. Sean went to the left hand and moved away from the defensive uh, player. That's Gibson's 13th point of the night. Couch, good pass underneath. Couch to the Cedric Fuller. Fuller has 10. 34-29, four minutes to go in a half. Fuller and Couch. Quite a one-two uh, duo tonight. Hans Ryder over to Walton on the side underneath Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson goes up. Oh, if he wasn't fouled once or twice or three times. And a Kentucky State coach wants to travel, and you're right, Charles. He did travel. I think a couple of things have happened here. They call the foul on number 30, but the well, actual foul was on number 20, Toby Joseph. Yeah, and not only that, we just got a technical. On so, Toby uh, Joseph. Th this could be a six-point play, Charles. The score's 34-29, and could be a six-point play. Well, Gibson got fouled several times, if we had that on replay. <laughs> Gibson got fouled several times. Uh, one was just an absolute grab of the hand. Then he walked with the ball. Then he got fouled again. So Gibson at the line to shoot two. He's been there six times before he's hit his first five. See Coach Graham talking to Toby Joseph. Joseph got the technical. Sean Gibson's first. Free throw, 34 to 30. Six out of seven for Gibson from the line in this half. The eyes the basket, the ball's in the air, it's up, it rattles around, it's no good. Six out of eight from the line for Gibson. Marcinic, it looks like he's going to shoot the technical foul shots. We're having a discussion here by the free throws uh, by the official. Now this is going to be real interesting. First free throw is up by Marcinac. He's shooting the technical. Second free throw is up. It's also good. Some of the fans are real unhappy here, and I still haven't figured out what's going on. The Don should get the ball, Charles. It's 34-32. We've got three out of those six. Now, if we can hit a three-pointer. Most of the fans have just become aware that on the technical, we also got the ball. So this could be a six-point play. Let's at least get five out of it. Down in the corner to Marcinac. Marcinac out to Gibson. Gibson underneath the Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder has it stolen away. There's Andre Walson scrambling the ball, and the thoroughbreds come up with it. We didn't handle that very well. Oh, nice pass underneath. And we have a foul on Shane Gibson, I believe. 
and a little extra play afterwards uh, with Sean Gibson. If we have that whole sequence there, there we have the foul. And then that's yes. after, <laughs> that's some extracurricular play again. Well, after that whistle blows, uh, cuff the guy going for the other basket. And really that's a good play by Sean Gibson. Fuller wants to go up, he wanted to dunk the ball anyway, even though he heard the whistle also. So Sean said, I'll have none of that. Murphy in for Hansleiter. The sixth foul on the Dons. Underneath the basket, Grimm. Grimm to couch. Walton's got to get out on him. He's got 11. There's Toby Joseph. Great action tonight at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. I Grimm, used to call it that. There's Couch down in the corner. Oh, Sean Gibson is getting clobbered under there by 44, and they may have drawn some blood. Andre Walton had the position for the rebound, didn't get it. There's Couch again. Fourth three. Four three, and he hits his fourth three of the game, giving him 14. We need to be aware of where this young man is at all times on the court. Someone who hits four of three corners is not a fluke, so you need to pay some special attention to him. Well, Sean Gibson was getting absolutely clobbered by Albert Shabius for the Thoroughbreds. Pat Murphy. Marcinac from the top of the key. Russ Marcinac, the Division I transfer. That's a great step up shot right that time by Marcinac. Didn't took what the defense gave him. Took a step in and took a nice 12 foot shot. Down in the corner. Brim pushed off. Three seconds in there. Anytime they want. John Gibson with a rebound out to Andre Walton. He doesn't have the break, but let's see how he takes it. He takes it. It goes. You said, Charles, there's Andre Walton. 37 36. And got a 15 to go in a half. The crowd's gotten a little bit alive here and excited. Oh. Offensive foul, 34. Now, Charles, if you can see this, the, the, the thing here is that 30 he did, Fuller is third foul, and that's critical. That's two with three. He goes in and he, he sticks his knee out. Now, I haven't seen that in a lot of basketball. A lot of people will use the elbow or the shoulder, but he used his knee. And I think that's where the foul came. Sean Gibson did not have a, that particularly good of a defensive position, but I think the leg out was the cause of the foul. That's the, uh, that's the tenth foul on the Thoroughbreds, and that is, uh, that's the third on Cedric Fuller. And he was the Great Lakes Valley Conference Player of the Week two weeks ago. Big foul. He also has 10 points, so uh, let's see. They replace him. Little comes in. Uh, Eric Little, number 52, into the lineup. Albert Shavius, number 44. Here comes Andre Walton up the court. Guarded again by Brim. Good pass underneath. We've got a foul from way out on the court. Gibson was fouled. We had two officials, Charles Let's see if Closer. That's on Little. No, they caught a number 44. 44, Albert Shavius, his first. Sean Gibson will be at the line shooting two. Well, the Dons need to be active inside, Charles. Uh, uh, ten fouls now uh, on the Thoroughbreds. Puts the Dons on the line for two every time we, uh, we come down there. 37-36. Now's the chance to go up for the first time. Tonight. And there it is. It's, we now have a tie ball game. That's Gibson's 15th point. It's for the lead. And it's short. Couch with the rebound. Grim on a drive. Grim goes all the way, and they, he gets his own rebound. And look at that. He misses the shot. Little with the tip, and Little gets the basket. That was just good effort by number 12, Vondell Grim. 39-37. Minute and a half to go in a, in a half. Ooh. Almost a line drive there, and there is a foul on on number 20, Andy Liebert, and that's, I have him for his second foul, and that is the seventh foul in the Dons. I don't know what you have, uh, but I, I have the first two points for Little on that last tip-in. That was his first basket, and, and he's averaging he, close to 19 points a game. He is the seventh uh, ball player for the Thoroughbreds to have scored here this evening, Charles. 39-37, Rim, who got the go-ahead basket uh, to preserve that lead, is back at the line shooting one plus one. 
Shot is up and it is good. Lawrence played a pretty good floor game. He's done a lot of things. He hasn't scored an awful bunch of points, but he's done some good. Well, he has five. He's going for six, but he's been out there, uh, according to my tally, the entire ball game. His second shot is up. It's off to the side. And Gibson with a rebound over to Andre Walton. A little over a minute to go and a half. To Gibson. Gibson top of the key. Gibson drive. Gibson shoots. Oh, get it. And Sean Gibson making a statement. 17 points for Sean Gibson. Why he has the inside, the inside track on the GLVC Player of the Year. Little with a drive. Little shot blocked. Little with another shot on the rebound. Gibson with a rebound for the Dons. 52 seconds to go to half. The Dons down by one. Andre Walton closely guarded by Grimm. Out to Shane Gibson. The ball's kicked. We'll get a reset. Then uh, the 45-second clock with 45 seconds. Cornell Forrest back into the game for Kentucky State. Number 50, Eric Dunnigan. And Little's in there, Couch is in there. And Brim's still out there shadowing Andre Walton. Walton takes it back out. Over on the side to Murphy. Murphy. Over to Tony Martin. I missed Tony Martin when he came into the game. Tony Martin on the side. Tony Martin passes to Murphy. Murphy's got to hit that shot. Ooh, the Dons may have gotten a little break there. But that's in a way, Charles. That kind of shot gets you the air ball cheer. <laughs> Murphy's got to hit that eight-foot shot. Sure, and that was a good pass, good drive by Martin, who may have uh, had a good shot himself on the drive, but a good dish out nevertheless. Tony to, Martin uh, with it underneath. Martin Murphy. to Murphy. There's Murphy. Not a strong move. Here's a three on nobody. Number 12, Grimm, and we've got a we've got a travel on Grimm. We would have had a basket interference on John Gibson or Shane Gibson. That was just really uh, beneficial there for the Dons. Good break. Well, also, 39, 40, 14 seconds to go, and here come the Thoroughbreds with some pressure. Three on one that time, and the Thoroughbreds couldn't capitalize. And the kick was, kicker was Charles. It, it, Shane Gibson really was lagging the play. Here comes Andre Walton, guarded closely by Brim. Andre drives. Andre with a left hand misses. Martin with the ball. Martin shoots, scores! And ladies and gentlemen, that's your half. 41-40 at the buzzer. The Dons take their first lead, Charles. Your assessment of the first half. Well, and what that does, first of all, I'll talk about the last couple of minutes there, and what that last basket really does is give the Thoroughbreds and the Dons something to think about, what it does. The Dons, hey, we're up one now. We've been trailing all game, didn't play particularly well, but we're up one. The Thoroughbreds had a pretty good first half, but they're losing by one point right now. Uh, the quickness, I think, got a little bit uh, to the Dons in the first half. The pressure also gave the um, gave the Thoroughbreds some problems, which I, I thought it could. Okay, Charles, we'll be right back for more uh, Great Lakes uh, basketball action right after these brief messages. Well, uh, here's my pet peeve of basketball, Charles. Just because officials can't throw the ball up straight or get it up high enough <laughs> to today's athletes, we go with the alternate possession. And the alternate possession arrow here starts out the second half with Kentucky State's ball. So we'll see how they handle being behind. There's Crouch on the side with a three wide open, and he hits the three to start the half just like he did in the beginning of the ball game. Jermaine Crouch, we've got to get out on him. That's 17 for Crouch. That's his fifth three-pointer. That's just poor recognition by the Don's defense that time. He's hit four three-pointers. You have to put some pressure on him. Andre Walton's taking Grimm down underneath. Andre Walton up. Andre Walton with a basket. 43-43. Andre Walton, very efficient post There's player. There's a turnover. Just a long, long pass. That, he could have been 10 feet tall and he wouldn't have gotten that ball. <laughs> Sean Gibson passes into Simmons. Number 10, Andre Walton. Now that was an interesting move the last time down the floor because Andre Walton took Grimm underneath and took him underneath and they got him to the Mastodon's getting the ball. Here's Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson 
excuse me, Shane Gibson. Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson. Oh, he put the ball on the floor. He made the basket. Rinky's first basket, but Charlie, he put the ball on the floor. And there was not a need. And he's had the ball stripped a couple of times down low by doing that, bringing the ball down. There's number 24, Cornell shoots. There's Little with a rebound. He makes the basket. Little just uh, made, got his second basket of the game, made his presence felt there. 45 45, 18 He takes up so there. much space. Oh, he is. He didn't really jump for that rebound, but he cleared out just by being there. Oh, Sean. Out of bounds, Gibson, I think, got banged in the head again. He's uh, taking some lumps here this evening. Well, that's a typical uh, Sean Gibson basketball game. Hitting the floor five or six times, taking some shots to the face and the stomach, and tonight's no different. Brim to Forrest. Forrest dribbles the ball, waits for Brim over the line. Fans thought there might have been a little step there. We thought so, too. There's the pass to Little, like you said. Little up with it, Andre Walton with a rebound. Little took about a 12-foot turnaround that time. There's the kick. Gibson's pass underneath by Cedric Fuller. Fuller is in the ball game. He has three fouls, and Little has two. We played almost two minutes in this half, and there's no fouls. That was Gibson to Gibson. There's a good pass. He did not put the ball on the floor. Doug Winky got three, put the ball in the basket. Great pass and good pressure no by the Dons. The Thoroughbreds break the pressure underneath. Good basket. Cedric Fuller again. The Dons. Oh, underneath on a stuff by Reinke. Reinke has six points in this half. 49 47, and the fans always like the stuff. There's Forrest over on the side, back to Brim. Brim down the right side. Guarded closely by Andre Walton. Oh, he had Fuller on the break. He didn't hit him. There's number 24, Forrest. And Brim. Brim may have called. We may have Sean Gibson on a foul. I think it is a foul on Sean Gibson. Foul on Sean Gibson. It is his second. That's the first on the team. And that's more or less a bailout right there. There wasn't much Brim could do about it. And I, I didn't see much of a foul. And again, a bailout foul of for Brim. Not much that he could do with that basketball. And apparently it was not a shooting foul. Tony Martin in the ball game for Simmons. Apparently that was called on the pass. Oh, they had to take timeout. Good defense by the Dons. The Thoroughbreds could not get the ball inbounds. 49-47, 17-27 to go in the game. We'd like to remind you, fans, that next Friday evening, this college, we'd like to remind you that this college cable access program guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 program guide, send your name, address, and zip code to the College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499, or call us at 481-6581. Our next, uh, our next uh, telegast here is this Friday night, our Volley Dons play Long Beach State University here. And folks, I'm telling you what. I think that number is 481 for the free um, guide there. 481 6582. 481 6582. Brim from the side. Brim up. Gibson with a rebound. Andre Walton down quickly for the Dons. Penetrates into the lane, he's cut off. Over to Shane Gibson, Shane Gibson for three. The three's awfully hard off the board. Brim with a rebound. Brim down quickly, drives over on the corner to Crouch. Crouch backs it out, shoots an air ball. Sean Gibson with a rebound. Gibson a long, long pass. And a bas no basket. Doug Reinke did put his shoulder in there, Charles. He made the basket. Uh, but Again. he waited. He yeah. waited Charles too long. He catches the ball, takes it to the basket. He's going to be in good shape. 
Tony Martin in the ball game now is guarding number 24, Forrest. Grim is, I think, five five foot ten. Doug Ranky six nine. You have to get that basketball and go straight up with it. No questions asked. Take the ball, go right in, go to the basket. Crouch guarded by Walton. Walton out top. There's Crouch again with the ball. Passes over to, to Forrest. Forrest with the ball to Couch. Gibson guarding Couch. Basket by Dunnigan. Dunnigan with the basket. That's his first basket in game, 49-49. And Tony Martin threw it away. What we have, nobody seems to know. This is interesting, Charles, if our fans can see. his first basket in game, 49-49. And Tony Martin threw it away with the hands nobody seems to know. This is interesting, Charles. If our fans can see, this may be an absolute call because nobody has any idea where in the world the ball went and why it came up. And we're going to jump it up. And, and neither coach is happy. Neither coach is happy with the call, obviously. Now we're going to have a little discussion in the middle of the floor. You can see Coach Piazza. As we see the replay ourselves, there may have been a little deflection there. What most coaches will ask for, whether it's a good call or a bad call, they want you to at least be consistent. You're going to get some bad calls, and, but they like to And we see want you be people to make the call. Yes, take a stance. If it's a bad call, at least you're consistent. And it will be the Don's ball now on the alternate possession. Coach Graham arguing vehemently with the official. And I, and I think that's the complaint, Charles. Make a call. Here we go. He passed the ball in to Andre Walton. From Shane Gibson to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson missed Martin on the cut. Somebody's got to be open for the Dons. There's, there's Shane Gibson. Walton working down low. And number 12, Grimm. Grimm and Andre Walton were really going at it. That's uh, Grimm's first foul in the ball game. That's a good call. Uh, Grimm clearly holding on to Andre Walton on the post. Um, Andre Walton definitely more accustomed with being down there in the paint than Grimm, and uh, I don't think he's able to handle him in that situation. And that's the first foul this half on a guess. Gibson to Gibson again. Sean Gibson getting laid on by Fuller into Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson up hard with the left hand. Good. Gibson's first basket of the half. That gives him 19 in the ball game. Grim, Crouch, Crouch with the ball. Crouch Gibson got it by Shane Gibson. Grim with the ball. Grim down to Fuller. Fuller dribbles, passes back out to Crouch. Crouch guarded by Sean Gibson to Grim. Grim rolling, but guarded by Walton. On the right side, the Grim, oh, number 50. Dunnigan got wide open. Steal by Tony Martin. And this is interesting. Tony Martin to Andre Walton, and he slipped away. Andre Walton on a drive. Andre Walton on a good, a good screen. A good screen by Tony Martin. Exactly. That won't go in the box scores, but Tony Martin should get an assist on that basket. Crouch. Oh, Tony Martin just reached out to grab him. And Tony Martin getting some significant minutes here. Got some uh, significant minutes late in the first half and early here in the uh, second half. Getting some good minutes. And it's good to see him coming off those two injuries on in the last two years that's, get into uh, the that's game. That's Martin's first foul, the third on a team in this half. Here we are, the Dons with their largest lead of the game, 53-49, 15-20 to go. Grimm underneath. Grimm misses the layup, and Ranky with the rebound. Walton down the left side quickly into the center of the court. Passes back to Ranky. Ranky for three. It's up, no good. Tony Martin with the rebound, misses the layup. Gibson's there. John Gibson, three shots at the basket. And you'll take those percentages any time. <laughs> three shots every time. There's a foul on, on Reinke. That's going to be Reinke's third. And Fuller will be at the line for two. 
That's good pressure. That's not that bad of a foul um, by Rankin. That's good pressure on the basketball, but uh, Fuller's ability to stay in the air and hesitate a little bit caused the foul that time. And Rankin's played extremely well. Ran the floor very well in the second half and got some big baskets. Well, that's only Rinky's second foul. I had him for two in the first half, Charles. Somewhere uh, we must have lost one here and uh, given him one somewhere else. Forrest at the line. Shot is up and good. He's five out of five from the line, Charles. I hate to jinx him. <laughs> but go ahead. He's going to try to make it six in a row. The free throw is up, and it is good. He's six in a row. Now he has 14 in the game. 51-55, 115 minutes to go in the game. Andre Walton brings it up. It's down the right hand side. He's guarded by Kraut. To Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson missed, missed Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder was wide open. Back to Andre Walton. Over to Tony Martin. Tony Martin on the left hand corner. Passes out to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson fakes up. Sean Gibson goes up. Sean Gibson is fouled by number 11, Jermaine Couch. And that's Couch's first foul. And Sean Gibson will shoot two. That's the second foul on the, on the thoroughbreds. Uh, IPFW has four fouls this half. Sort of a reversal in the half. Yes. That was a great ball fake by Sean Gibson. Any young players out there, if you're a big player and you have the ability to shoot from outside, a fake will get you to the basket every time. Gibson's first free throw is good. He's now eight out of 11 from the line. 22 points. Good picture of Sean Gibson. Sean at the line. He's up, the shot is up, and it is off. Tip, rebound, Tony Martin. Tony Martin, Hans Ryder, Hans Ryder shot is blocked, and he is fouled, I believe, by Little. Charlie, that may be on Cedric Fuller, number 34. Let's watch. No, it's on it's Little. Fuller or Little. It's Little. Eric Little's third personal foul, the third on a team. And Ed, that is Andre Walton's rebound. The little guy got up there, got a hand, got up very quickly, and got a hand on the ball and tipped it out. And Tony Martin grabbed it, passed it out. Good ball movement. Hans Ryder took it strong down the middle. Hans Ryder to shoot two. First one's up. It's good. Hans Ryder has nine. Major contributions off the bench tonight from John Hansgrader. The good thing about the Master Dodge, you can't key on any one player uh, besides Hans maybe a Sean Gibson because you never know where the punch is going to come lead, from. 58-51, 14-20. That's Hansgrader's 10th point off the bench. By the Thoroughbreds, Crouch. The number 20, Toby Joseph in the game. 24 for us, back to Crouch. Crouch is now going to play the point guard with, with Brim on the bench. There's Joseph. Joseph down the Little. Little makes the basket and is fouled. I think the foul's on John Hunsreiter. Wow. It's hard not to lean on Little when he goes to the basket. He's so wide. Now, we're, uh, we're sitting here. Doug Rinke has two. Uh, uh, Sean Gibson has two. John Hunsreiter has three. Little at the line. He's been held to six points. He's going to shoot his one. Shot is up and rattles around. John Hunsreiter with a rebound. And Ray Walton up court. Token pressure from Crouch. Over to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson fakes the three. Sean Gibson takes the three. Sean Gibson is short on the three. Good rebound effort by John Hunsreiter. And Sean Gibson goes sprawling on the floor after the ball. Sean has the ability to nail that three-point shot, but this year hasn't been as proficient at it as he has been in the past. Two inches shorter, Charles, and that one would have drawn nothing but air. Pressure by the Dons. Toby Joseph with the ball over to Jermaine Couch. Couch guarded more closely right now by Shane Gibson. There's Toby Joseph, top of the key. Joseph up, no good. Sean Gibson with a rebound. Sean Gibson to Andre Walton to Hans Ryder. Hans Ryder all the way. Hans Ryder with his 12th basket. John Gibson got that ball off the boards real quick. And that basket, John Hansreiter got that basket out of doing what he's supposed to do, getting out and filling that basketball lane. Filling that right lane, he got out and got a basket because of it. 
How about Tony Martin underneath as big little he takes up an enormous amount of space in anybody's league. I really am. That's a shame. Go, go. That's our sixth personal foul with 15.08 to go. 60-53 lead. Jeff Smithy, number four, into the game. And number 20, Andy Liebert, into the game. Pounded into Little underneath. Little with a turnaround. Either way. It seemed like the, the taller uh, thoroughbreds had the advantage there, and, and you would think that they were the ones that tipped the ball out of bounds, but we're up here. Number 34, Cedric Fuller back into the game after a brief rest. I haven't seen Scott Simmons this half. No. There's Little. They could give Little a parking ticket in there. <laughs> Big Andre Walton took the foul. But I'll tell you what, Charles, that time, Little, there's no such thing as three seconds, 10 seconds, maybe. <laughs> Once he gets in there, it's probably not that easy to get out. Little be at the line shooting one plus one. 53 60, 12 52 the game. Hunt's right around. Let's see what happens from this point on. Again, thoroughbreds already in the bonus, Ed, and uh, the thoroughbreds have three fouls to give before the Don starts shooting. Shot up and rolls around, and again, no good. Liebert with a rebound. Andre Walton up the right-hand side, top of the key. Over to Pat Murphy. Murphy stands, hold the ball. Little comes out on him. Over to Andre Walton. Walton dropped, guarded closely by Couch. Deshaun Gibson, number 41. Gibson looks, guarded by Fuller. He looks, he looks, he looks. No movement. Pat Murphy, oh, Pat Murphy hacked by a Little out here. 25 feet from the basket. There's Andy Liebert with the ball. Andre Walton. Right now, the Dons are out of sync. Yeah, a little bit of disarray out there right now. Some frustration underneath the basket. Uh, Andre Walton in. Andre Walton penetrates to Murphy. Three seconds. Murphy looks. Murphy's shot is short. Rebound by Little. Couch. Couch over to Forrest. Forrest. Looks like they're, they're making. Going this led Sean Gibson too much. Sean. The Dons right now are just out of sync. Something's just not moving too right. Yeah, Sean just had a head-on collision with Mr. Wall down there. And you know, Mr. Wall's going to win that confrontation every time. Uh, the, last, the last sequence that the Dons had by far, um, the lowest that we saw the shot clock get There's down. Graham just beat Smithy all the way down the floor. And Jeff Smithy picks up his first foul. That is the eighth on the Dons this half. Oh, Charles, look at the scoreboard. 11.48 to go and a half, and it's the eighth foul on the Dons. And three on the thoroughbred. As we just saw, Sean trying to take on the wall. He's pretty good against anybody else in the GLVC or anywhere, but Mr. Wall, he's not very good against there. Here's Vondell Brim at the line. His free throw is up, and it's good. He'll get the bonus. 60-54, 11.48 to go and a half. One shot. Grim to shoot the second. And it's good. 55-60, the Don's lead is 10, or excuse me, five. I was thinking of the thoroughbred's largest lead. Walton up court, guarded by closely by Brim. Over to Sean Gibson. Gibson drives. Gibson reverse layup is good. Sean Gibson can take Fuller, because Fuller has three personals. Exactly. That was an excellent move. But right now, he's got to get some help from the other people on the floor. Brim up, guarded by Smithy. And there goes Smithy, getting beat, if you will, by, by Brim. But Brim passed it back out. Tony Joseph, Sean Gibson with a rebound. Gibson to Walton. Brim is just an off, is just so much more quicker than Smithy right now. There's Smithy. He fakes, he's got couch on him. He passes off to Murphy. Murphy had a six footer, passed it up. And we talked about that point you just brought up a few minutes ago. We talked about that, how uh, Smithy would contend with the quickness of the thoroughbreds. Fans upset with that call. That pass, uh, real quick pass. And again, I'm not certain the officials were in a position to see. Fuller over in the corner. Smithy, Fuller to Brim. Brim drives on Smithy again, and we've got a foul on Smithy. 
you see Marsnick just about get ready, getting ready to come back into the basketball game. Smithy does not, simply does not have the quickness to contend with um, Grimm's quickness. So Marsnick will come into the basketball game. But it's great to have that luxury. No, they're bringing, they're bringing uh, Marsnick in for Andre Walton. Well, that surprises me. And here's Brim. He's been at the line uh, before tonight four times. He's three out of four from the line. He's going to shoot one plus one. That's the ninth foul on the Dons. And just under 11 minutes to go. Shane Gibson coming in right now for Andy Liebert. And it doesn't look like uh, too long before John Huntrider is going to be back in the ball game. But the Mastodons right now are picking up some big numbers on the fouls. Again by Brim. Brim five out of six from the line. 62-57. Now we talked about we have Marshall to get the point guard as opposed to when he's playing with Walton, he plays the two position. Now Smithy, of course, will play the well, two. We've got to have some help in the offense here. There's Murphy at the top of the key. So, to Marcinek. There's Smithy. Smithy underneath to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson with a turnaround. It's good. 27, 26 points right now for Sean Gibson in the ball game. There's Brim. Brim Green guard, guarded by Marcinek. And Marcinek's going to take him, and Marcinek picks up the foul. Coach Graham must have told his team, get the ball in the hands of Brim, and Brim, you take the ball to the basket, and he's doing that very effectively. And we've got a timeout right now for the Dons. There's a timeout on the floor. 10-19 to go, 64-57, Charles. And we just got to look at that foul on the Marcinek. Brim does not feel anyone on the Dons can control or guard him. We'll be right back after these brief messages for more great GLBC basketball action. Talk about unusual. How often do you see transparent television? Americans have more money to spend on leisure activities than ever before. When possible, children should trick or treat during daylight hours and be accompanied by at least one adult. A boat archaeologists believe is from the time Jesus and his disciples fished on the Galilee. For best results, fertilize your lawn when it is actively growing. Many people suffer from allergies. Few understand them. Welcome back to the Gates Memorial Gym here on the campus of Indiana Purdue for Great Lakes Valley basketball between the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State who currently have 57 points at the free throw line. Grimm's going to be at the line shooting one plus one. And our host, Mastodon 64, a seven-point lead in the game. But here's Brim. He has been to the line four times in, a, in this half. He's four for four from the line. And he's going to shoot again two shots. We may see him there more because he feels he has the advantage going to the basket against anyone that the Dons have uh, put on him thus far. He's five out of five. Charles, mark that down. 10-19 to go in a half. The Dons have 10 fouls all the rest of the way. Kentucky State's going to be shooting two. There we are. Two more for Grammy. Six out of six. Marcinak over to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson loses the ball in the corner, and it is a jump ball going to Kentucky State. Sean Gibson once again hits the floor. In all those other other categories, he leads the GLVC in. I'm sure he leads the GLVC in. probably in Charles, the right? Yeah. I mean, uh, geez, when I played, I used to wear knee guards on both knees, Charles, and sometimes my elbows. Sean would need something all over his body as much as he hits the floor. Here's Brim again, guarded by Marcinek. Let's see if their strategy again is to get the ball to Brim. Crouch to Brim. Into Sean Gibson, or excuse me, Fuller guarded by Sean Gibson. He throws it up off the boards. Sean Gibson with a hard rebound. And here's Marcinek. Marcinek in the front court, guarded by Grimm into Murphy. Murphy hard underneath, throws up almost a near ball. Not a Gibson contact. was on the floor again underneath the basket. Here's Grimm on the drive over to Forrest. Little at the top of the key, moves in, and they call a foul on Murphy. Again, the 11th foul 
on the Don. Three fouls. And what you have to do there, get the ball inside and go to the basket. You got to pile up the fouls on these uh, thoroughbreds. And Eric Little will be at the line shooting two. The only good thing here is Charles that he's the only thoroughbred who's been at the line this half that has missed from the line. The rest of the team is a perfect eight out of eight. He's got good form and good touch it seems, but he just hasn't been able to knock those uh, free throws down. Some changes. Tony Martin, number 12 in. Andre Walton back in. Doug Ranke, number 44 in, along with the Gibson twins. Actually, they're not twins. Well, they're not twins. They're not twins. Oh, for some reason, I thought they were twins. Shane's, uh, Shane's older. Had a birthday a few weeks ago. Is that right? Okay. I stand corrected. Well, one, we jinxed him. He only hit 50%. He's one out of two from that time. 60-64. Andre Walton guarded by Brim. Off the top of the keys. Guarded closely in the corner to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson with the ball. Out to his brother Shane. Stolen by Brim. A bad pass for the Dons. And there goes young Mr. Brim. And he misses the layup. But Crouch is there to get the layup. He throws it up and in. Jermaine Crouch with his 19th point. 64-62 and the down seven point lead has disappeared. The fans desperately wanting a bucket out of these dimes, as is I'm sure Coach Andy Piazza. John Gibson, 30 feet from the basket. Walton. We've got a hole, I believe, on Brim. That's the fourth foul on Kentucky State, Charles. They've still got three to give. And that's something maybe the Dons would like to look at. Our big guys, um, they're bigger. <laughs> Kentucky State's big guys are bigger than our big guys, so maybe we can go inside the wall. It's worked a couple of times before. Well, Fuller has had three fouls since about eight minutes in the first half and has not gotten one. There's a bad pass, and because Ranky just stood there waiting for the ball. And there's Little with the ball. Kentucky State took a timeout and that Charles is significant because that's their second. You too can join in the excitement of IPFW athletics by participation in our Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons Club is the official booster club for all IPFW athletic teams. Members enjoy priority seating at all sporting events food and refreshments in our hospitality room, admission to media luncheons and association with other Mastodon supporters, just to name a few benefits. For information on becoming a member of the Royal Dons Club, call Lisa Moreland at 481-6027 or write the Royal Dons Club, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, 46805, or call Lisa Moreland, 481-6027. This is your hometown Fort Wayne NCAA basketball team and sports program, folks. We've been around 25 years, Charles, in athletics. And a lot longer as an educational institution. And right now we're um, pretty much, I would say, a powerhouse in the GLVC. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, right up there at the cream of the crop. Certainly has, and it's a far cry from the early wanderings of the Gypsy Mustang. <laughs> Here we are, a chance for the Thoroughbreds to tie. They've scored the last five points in a row. There's Little wide open underneath on the cut. His seventh point of the half. Charles, he's going to get those 19 points at this rate. He's got seven in his half now. 64-64 at 8.08. Right now, Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson has to make some contributions from the outside for these dimes. Well, he's, uh, he's scoreless. There's Sean Gibson. He wheels. He's trying to work one and one. He passes back to his brother. His brother from the top of the key. It's up. It's no good. And here's a two on one. A good cuff by Tony Martin. But I'll tell you what, folks, we're just getting beat right now in quickness. And that's going to be Tony Martin, I believe, third foul. As you see the replay here, it could be the combination of players that seems the last few minutes that Coach Piazza. I thought there's a little chemistry when uh, Marcinic and Smithy were at the guards, and since that point, it seems the chemistry has been lacking a little bit in the Don's play. 
That doesn't mean I'm second second guessing Coach Piazza. I'm not either. He's got more wins than I do. <laughs> My winning percentage may be better, but he's got more wins there than you I go. do. Here's that man Brim and again at the line. He's going to shoot two, and I'll tell you what, he's perfect there tonight, and he is still perfect there tonight in this half. This is his tenth free throw, Charles. He, if he makes this, he'll be nine out of ten. That's ninety percent. That's pretty good in anyone's league. And it's short. Thank goodness. Good jinx. Here we are. One point lead to the thoroughbreds. And Dom's down by one. Andre Walton with the ball guarded by Brim. Over to Pat Murphy. Pat Murphy looks. To Sean Gibson. Left hand side of the key. Over to Shane Gibson in the corner. Shane Gibson fakes. Passes it to Tony Martin. It's going to go off. Tony Martin out of bounds. They just aren't giving Shane Gibson a clear look at the basket. Maybe they read some scouting reports and watched the Don's play, but they just are not giving him a good Here's look Grimm at the Here's Grim very quickly up court. He, he looks like he's got a shot of adrenaline from somewhere. It looks like, Charles, he just wants to take charge of this ball game. There he goes with a good move off of Murphy to Little, Little for two, and it's a three-point deficit for the Don's. 67 64 just under seven minutes to go here the Dons have been stuck on 64 for a while now Ed, and we need a big basket maybe it's time to go to our all-american candidate sean gibson shane to tony martin i'll tell you cedric fuller is all over gibson there's little with a rebound and a few elbows flying there but no call forrest with the ball sean gibson with it with an attempted steal here goes mr brim he passes off out to Joseph. Joseph to Crouch at the top of the key. He directs traffic. Over to Joseph. Joseph guarded by Walton. And there's going to be a foul on, on Little. We're going to have a foul on Little. That's his fourth. Now mark that one down. 6-15. Eric Little picks up his fourth personal foul. But that's only the fifth. It looked, like, thoroughbreds. it looked like he just bent down, but when you have 270, well, and we say 270 very lightly. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he found bending down. He, that scale must only go to 270. <laughs> Murphy with the ball. Andre Walton, Shane Gibson, Tony Martin. I'll tell you what, it's amazing. Fuller is all over Shane Gibson. And there comes the sixth foul. On a block. Close to six minutes, a little less than six minutes, and finally at the next foul, the Dons are finally going to be shooting the one and one. Well, the, the, the good situation is the Dons have no one with four. Toby Joseph, number 20, has four for the Thoroughbreds, and Little has four. We need to get that fourth foul on Fuller because Fuller has just really been working Sean Gibson. Martin comes out. Simmons comes in. Simmons gave us a big lift in the first half. We need that from him now. There's Shane Gibson. And if you can see the action away from the ball, there's Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson up. Sean Gibson misses. He's a little frustrated right now. The ball on the floor, and it's the Mastodon's ball. Great basketball action right there. Good move by Gibson. Great rebounding action underneath the basket by both teams, Thoroughbreds and the Mastodon. That's great action from our camera people, Charles. There's Sean, Shane Gibson, Andre Walton, to Scott Simmons. There's Gibson, and he is fouled out on the floor by number 50, Dunnigan. That's his second. Now, that's what we've been waiting for. That's the seventh. Sean Gibson goes to the line, shooting one plus one. Again, you just did a great camera action by our Channel 6 camera men or camera person. Here we are. You can see that right there on the replay. He grabbed him out. Now, you know, uh, we've gone over four minutes without scoring here, Charles. It's been a long drought for the Dons. Let's see if Gibson can crack that drought. If you want anyone to crack that drought, that's the guy you want cracking. And he's tired right now. That shot is no good. 67-64. Here's Grimm. Grimm with the ball. Five and a half minutes to go in the game to Crouch. Heads off, heads off. Forrest back to Crouch. There's Grimm. Crouch has been relatively quiet in the second half. Forrest. The Brim. Andre Walton guarding Brim. 
Brim on the drive. Brim up. Brim no. Sean Gibson with a rebound. And you just saw there, Brim. Simmons for three. Simmons with the three. That's what we needed from Scott Simmons. 67-67. Great setup by Walton, but that was predicated by Walton's defense. Brim cannot do the same thing against Walton that he can do against Marcinick and Smithy. Exactly. And we just saw that on the last play. Well, now we've got we've got the match that they might want. We're we're in a shifting now. Simmons out on Forrest. There's Brim. Brim guarded by Gibson. Oh. Murphy with a rebound to Walton. Fuller thought he got tripped. Ball's up. Ball goes. But it is no basket and a foul is on Brim. Boy, we could have used that one. NBA, Charles, continuous action and we'd have had three on that one. Yeah, and Walton giving Brim some of his own medicine, taking him to the basket. That was a good move. That's the third foul on Grimm. That's the seventh on a team. We've got to make our free throws. We're only 50% in this half, two out of four. 67-67. 4.17 to go. Andre Walton at the line. It's up. It's good. We needed that one, Charles. We needed that one. 68-67. Let's see how Walton got to the line on the replay there. Good concentration. Up and good. Dons by two. 4.17 to go in the game. Morris with the ball. Dribbling around. There goes the coach. Out of time to get it up the court. Foul on Andre Walton. Andre Walton just committed his second foul. The thoroughbreds that time, Charles, came desperately close to not getting the ball across the 10 second line and 10 seconds took them almost eight and a half, nine seconds. A little dissension amongst the uh, Kentucky State thoroughbred players, Brim and uh, Fuller having a little. Our a fans few words. can't see that right now, but we only have the Dons on the line. There's three up. I mean, Pouch and Brim are just really jostling at one another at midcourt. Ooh. I think Couch is more or less the mediator. I think it was Fuller and Grimm that were having the heated words. The good thing there is Forrest threw up a brick on the first one. Let's hope that continues. 69, 67, 407. Forrest to shoot the second. It's up, it's good. Here's Andre Walton now with the ball, guarded by Brim. Shane Gibson, Shane Gibson for three, it's off. You can tell when it left. Good hustle by Andre Walton to bounce it off a of brim. He does so many intangible things, particularly on uh, both ends of the uh, rebounding glass uh, that people but He's never... got 10 points tonight, Charles. He's also in double figure, so all of those things add up. He does a lot of good things oh, for Oh, nice him. pass underneath from Shane Gibson to Pat Murphy gets his first two. 71-68 Don lead. 345, Brim across the timeline, over to Couch, back to Brim. Brim holds the ball out top. Back to Couch, Couch guided by Simmons. Over to Cornell Forrest, back to Couch. Couch is further out than he wants to be. There's Brim, there's Couch, Couch out top, boom, another three. That's six threes. The, the only good thing that Don's can say about that is he's only taken about seven of them. That's right. He may have only taken six. I don't have the first half stats, but he's uh, he's got a good shot, and I, we know he's missed one. There's Simmons. The Don's just have to be glad that he hasn't taken any more. Andre Walton, and that was a tough one. He had a man in his face. There's Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson's ball tipped out of bounds on the pass to Murphy by Dunnigan. And here comes Toby Joseph and Eric Little into the ball game for the last 257, Charles. Both of them have four fouls. Murphy really has his work cut out for him. Gibson with a good move. Gibson from Gibson. That's the second time Sean Gibson has made that play. He uses the rim as another defender against the defender so as that they cannot block the shot. Great play by the All-American candidate Sean Gibson. Right now, Sean Gibson is guarding Little, which uh, may be a mismatch. Walton, there's Brim for a three. 
His first three of the night. That's a ton of free throws and a couple of field goals. That's 15 for Brim. 74 73. 223 to go in a game. The Dons down by one. Walton with the ball to Scott Simmons. Simmons for three. It looks good. That's his third three. Dons by two. 76 74. 210 to go. That's a great play. No hesitation. There's Brim that time. again. Oh, an air ball. Shane Gibson with a rebound to Walton. And the Dons want a timeout. And listen to this crowd. That time, that time, Ed, you can see Brim is not really a shooter. He's uh, only taken one three-pointer tonight and nailed that one. Then the second one, he just missed very badly. Not a shooter. Do we have a dandy Don? Our dandy Don of the ball game has to be Mr. Sean Gibson. But we're going to wait on that because I want to tell you what, if Scott Simmons hits another three, I'm going to say it's going to be Simmons because Simmons has 12 points, and that's a substantial contribution. We expect the great numbers from Sean Gibson. And not only the 12 points, it's key situations. Um, this last three-pointer he hit was huge. 28 now for Gibson. Well, here we are. The difference in this half, Charles, has been the free throw shooting where the, the Dons shot 14 free throws in the first half, hit 11. Kentucky State was five out of six. That's a complete reversal in this half. And so here we are. We're just real happy to have a lead with 158 to go, 76-74. And something else that, come, that could come to play, Ed, there's some dissension amongst the Kentucky State thoroughbreds. They seem to get down on each other, and in key situations, if that happens, that could be very detrimental to their basketball know, uh, team. I don't know what happened down here, but, but Bram and Crouch and Forrest, the surprise is that Forrest, who two weeks ago was the Great Lakes Player of the Week, has three points tonight. But then on the other hand, Shane Gibson is throwing an over. Here's Walton, guarded by Bram, under two minutes to go, 151 on the clock. Scott Simmons guarded closely. There goes Andre Walton all the way. Andre Walton, no basket out on the floor. The foul is little, and he's gone. He's gone, and listen to this crowd. Now Brim saying he fouled it, pleading his case with the ref. And that is little as the coach's jacket comes off. And the crowd likes that because it's his fifth, and he's gone. And we're shooting a one and a bonus. He had nine points in the second half. Little, 11 points in a ball game, Charles. Eight below his average. And we're sure happy to see him sitting on the bench. Wasn't much of a factor. Uh, from the start of the second half to m about midway, he played some very good basketball. Then he collected his fourth foul and had to come out. And from that point on, never was a factor he in the basketball game. He takes up a lot of space, as we've talked about underneath that basket. So here we are. Let's set the stage. 146 to go. 76-74, Andre Walton at the line, shooting one and one. Dons have two timeouts left, Kentucky State has one. As we now see Graham and Coach Wayne Graham having a few words. And there is a short shot, and Andre Walton did not follow that shot. And he usually does, that's a good point, Ed, because he usually does follow all of his free throws. Here we are, there's Toby Joseph, there's Crouch. Over to Brim, over to Toby Joseph. Toby Joseph on the drive, Toby Joseph up, it's awfully hard, Andre Walton with the rebound. Long pass, Gibson, and there! Now if that's not an intentional foul, I don't know what is, Charles. Gibson is really frustrated with that one, I mean he was tackled. Actually, that foul was, it maybe it may have been a little harder, but it was probably a better foul than the one in the first half. But boy, as we talk about Sean Gibson here, meeting the floor, meeting and the, the wall. wall. <laughs> if that's our Dandy Don, Charlie Hustle Award, you know, Sean Gibson, here he is. He's shooting two. Boy, these are important free throws, and it's up. That's two out of four for him for the line in the first half, in this half. 
77 74 118 to go in a game Gibson at the line. This is the, the big shoot one. The bonus. This is the big one to make it at it's least up. a two it possession. It is off. It is no good. It's still possibly a one possession game right now. That was a big free throw. Two out of five for Sean Gibson in this half. There's Brim with the ball and we have Kentucky State with a timeout Charles and that's their last. The one timeout we mentioned it the one timeout that Little when Little could not find an outlet pass that was a huge timeout that he made. Yes it was. Well we'll see what kind of defense here Coach Piazza sets as you look into the Kentucky State huddle. The wide body there 52 is Little and folks he does take up space and we're awful happy he's taking up that space on the bench. You'd have to expect the Dons to give the ball to Brim and maybe let him create something. Uh, let him drive to the basket and then you, uh, you're you going to set up Couch somewhere out behind that three point arc. You're going to set him up and then you got Fuller on the inside. Oh. So those are your three options right there. Well, in, in this half, Jermaine Couch has two threes and a field goal for eight. Brim has ten. Little had nine. Fuller had four to go with his ten in the first half. Fuller has been quiet in the second half. So as, as uh, the coach down there for Kentucky State's talking to his team, what strategy he employs, obviously get the hand, ball in the hand to Brim, kick it to Fuller, kick it to Couch, or let Brim take it and hope he gets fouled. And he's been very successful at the free throw line in this half. And also Toby Joseph can definitely hit the three point basket and he can also create on his own too. Well the thing that surprised me tonight about Kentucky State when you looked at the book historically they play seven ball players tonight they play ten and I think that says something they may be a little better shape right now but the Dons play ten there's Brim with the ball there's Tony Joseph with the Toby Joseph with the shape out the couch couch with a man in his face and couch misses one and there's Mr. Dandy Don Gibson with the rebound and here we go to Scott Simmons to Walton. Some of the crowd on his feet. Walton with a penetration. Oh! Whew. Little late whistle there, Charles. My heart sank down into the lower part of my anatomy. <laughs> timeout before the foul. I assume we have a timeout before the foul. Now, Charles, I'm confused because the shot clock says 45 seconds up here, and that can't be the case because the Dons had some time off the clock. And I know what happened down here. And if the Kentucky State coach right now is complaining about the clock, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I think what happened, the scorekeeper assumed that there was a foul, which would automatically set the clock to 45 for the Kentucky State team. And now we see the referee talking to the scorekeepers. Well, it was under a minute when uh, Gibson got the rebound. If this is still IPFW possession, as we see the clock being set to 36 seconds. Well, that's about as close as it could come because when I, Gibson got the rebound with 59 seconds to go, uh, that was eight seconds ago. They took nine off the clock, so uh, I don't know where the ticks are. Folks, we'll set the stage for you. 49 seconds to go. Two of the contenders in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, the Thoroughbreds, the guests from Kentucky State. 74, your hometown IPFW Mastodons with 77 and the ball. No timeouts for Kentucky State. Two timeouts left for Coach Piazza's Mastodons. And that foul, by the way, was Fuller's fourth foul. So we're sitting there with Joseph with four and Fuller with four. It's not going to make a lot of difference at this point in time unless something happens. This game goes down into overtime. Exactly. Where the Dons would have a very large advantage. That was that was really an amazing sequence of events because I really thought with the late whistle when Walton got fouled they were going to call him for carrying the ball. Now here we go. We got to get the ball in bounds. There goes Shane Gibson. And we put Marson again as an extra ball handler. And they steal it. And a foul is going to be on Shane Gibson. Now, that's a big turn of events. Now you have three seconds, no, five seconds that ran off the clock. No points for the Dons. And the thoroughbreds, Fuller, going to the best, going to the free throw line, excuse me, to shoot two free throws. And they allowed Kentucky State to bring in the extra defender, which was the sideline out of bounds, the side court line. Exactly. And that really hurts. Here goes John Hunsrider back into the ball game for. Arsenal. 
to give us some rebounding power. 34 Fuller at the line. He's perfect there tonight. He's got two. He's six out of six there for the night. First one is up. It's away and it's good. He's seven out of seven, Charles. It's a two point ball game. 75 77, 44 seconds to go. Second one is up. It's away and it is no good. And a rebound by Gibson and Dunnigan was on Gibson's back. Here's Andre Walton with the ball, guarded closely by Brim. Brim, oh. Out to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson to Andre Walton, and there is Brim out there asking for an offensive foul. That's Brim's fourth. It doesn't make any difference. Andre Walton Charles at the line with two and a two-point lead. Two big free throws. If he hits one, you still have a chance at three-pointer, but if he hits two, you need two possessions. Crucial free throws right here by Andre Walton. Set the stage, 30 seconds to Don, 77. The Thoroughbreds from Kentucky State, 75. Andre Walton on the line. Shane Gibson and Scott Simmons on the line for the Dons. All five Thoroughbreds on the line. The shot is up and it's good. Now, a three, three can tie. This free throw is crucial, 30 seconds. No Dons on the line. Andre Walton. Looking for his 12th point of the night. The shot is up, it's away, it's good. 12 points for Andre Walton and a four point Don lead, two possession. There's Couch, watch him go. Out to Toby Joseph, Toby Joseph with a shot. Out of bounds, Don's ball. And the fans here are loving it. 22 seconds, a four point lead. And the Simmons. Dons. Marshall again for Hans Ryder for uh, ball handling purposes. Well, also, I don't know about Hans Ryder's free throw shooting ability, but I have to assume that the Marcinac's a little bit better free throw shooter. Exactly, considering that he shot the technicals uh, earlier. Number 24, Forrest in, Couch, setting the defense. Four point lead in the ball. Here we go. Can we get the ball in? We've got a foul in the backcourt. Simmons will be at the line. Two shots. Mr. Graham. The coach from Kentucky State unhappy, walks away with his folded towel. Maybe all over. And Hans Strader back in for defensive purposes. Foul is on Toby Joseph, his fifth. So Joseph fouled out, little fouled out. The Dons finally got the 10 free throws. And here is Scott Simmons shooting two. Keep in mind, Simmons has got 12 points tonight, Charles. It's played well. It's up, it's good. And it's a five point ball game. 20 seconds to go. With this victory, the Dons will move to five and two. Kentucky State will move to five and three. Putting the Dons a half game or a game out of first place. Simmons' his second shot is good. He now has 14 points. Our dandy Don will be Sean Gibson. The Gibson boys fight for the rebound. Shane with a rebound. And Shane is going to be fouled. Timeout. Or do we have a timeout? I think they got a timeout before the foul again. 81-75, 11 seconds to go. We'd like to remind you to turn in, tune in to us next Friday evening. Charles and I won't be here, because Charles, <laughs> we'd rather watch volleyball, I think. But at 8 o'clock to watch us play the Long Beach State 49ers on Friday night. And our volleyball team is exciting. Our basketball team is exciting. And we'd like to invite everyone to become a part of the Mastodon Madness here at IPFW. This whole program has just escalated, Ed. Uh, but we need to give a lot of credit to some of the people that started this thing out a long time ago in the years past. Because uh, you couldn't get to this point without having some of those people who struggled through some years earlier. Well, I want to tell you, Charles, I couldn't I could pay you enough for that lead in because two weeks from the night, on Saturday, February 6th, the Mastodons play Kentucky Wesley, and we're going to honor our silver anniversary Mastodon team. There's a foul uh, on couch. Andre Walton will be at the line. A frustration foul, 10 seconds, six point Don lead. Hans Ryder coming in for defensive purposes. Marcinac going out. Marcinac had four key first half points. 
great contributions all over by the Dons. One in particular, a player that we'd never even mentioned for Danny Don, John Hanstreiter, came in early in this game when the Dons got off to a slow start, set a tone, and got the Dons back into this basketball game. Walton's first free throw is good. Thirteen points now for Walton. He's eyeing his fourteenth, 82-75. The Dons lead. Put this one in the bank. Hans Ryder with ten points off the bench. There's Brim for three. It's long. Gibson with a rebound off of Brim. And he said it went off of Gibson. Okay, and Gibson agrees with that one. Good try. With two seconds to go and an eight-point lead. Eight I'll agree point too. Lead. Charles, I think we can put this one in the bank. Coach Piazza's team. The only problem is we have to go down there. There's, the, oh, who else? Forrest with, uh, I guess that was a two at the end of the game. Here's our final, 83-78 for the Dons. Great basketball game, great display, great momentum game, and that's what you're going to have with uh, good GLVC action, momentum. Whatever team can control the tempo the most and at the most crucial times, those are the teams that are going to come out on top, and the Dons did that when they had to. Probably a key for the Dons in the second half was Scott Simmons coming in with two three-pointers at crucial times, getting eight points in the second half to give him 14. Andre Walton with six free throws, 10 points in the second half. Andre with 14. Sean Gibson, his typical All-American talent, 29 points. John Hans Ryder with 10. And anytime Marcinac had four, uh, Doug Rinke, three baskets in the second half, uh, Murphy with two. But anytime you can get four or five ball players, Charlie, and double figures, we're going to be in good shape. And Rinke made some major contributions in the stretch in that second half. Randy Lane got about six quick points to start out the second half, played a great basketball game, as did all of the IPFW Mastodons. Well, this was. We'll be right back for the conclusion after these brief messages. And a visit with our Dandy Don, player of the game, Sean Gibson, in a moment. Athletic Center. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of the NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we're able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to the College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, 46805-1499. And I know Charles Washington is down on the floor at this time with our dandy Don at the game, Sean Gibson. 29 points for Sean. Nine free throws out of 15 attempts. Washington with our dandy Don player of the game, Sean Gibson. Sean asked me, what does it take to get back out here? Well, I guess 29 points, 18 boards, a lot of steals, and a few floor burns to do it, Sean. Yeah, um, we knew coming in this was going to be a tough game. Uh, these guys beat Wesleyan and Southern Indiana last week, but uh, I just told the guys, let's just go out, play hard, and you know, if we play hard, we'll see what happens. This puts you right back in a good position uh, up top of the GLVC with, but St. Joe's only has one loss. What can you expect from St. Joe, from Wesleyan? Those teams have to come in here. Like I said, we, uh, we felt to win the conference, we had to win every game at home, and, you know, and the tough places on the road at least split. You know, we, uh, we felt we had a major setback when we went on the Southern trip and lost two. 
but uh, we felt like we got a tough victory tonight. You know, we have to go to St. Joe, uh, I think, next week. We're going to try to pull one out there. But, uh, you know, definitely, like I can say, uh, the conference race is really back in our hands, and we can win it or lose it. You're keying a lot of uh, races, uh, I guess individual races in the GLVC, first in scoring, first in field goal percentage, right up there in free throw shooting, right up there in steals, right up there in blocked shots, right up there in free throws, everything, you're right up there. But a lot of your, uh, you had a lot of help from your players. Doug Ranke didn't come out particularly strong. John Hansreiter came in and played very strong at the beginning of the game, got you guys right back into it. Yeah, um, those are guys, we've all been through the wars together, you know. Um, Sometimes when one of us isn't on, the other one comes in and picks us up. And, you know, and that's what it takes to have a good team. You know, it, it, it doesn't, you know, you got to have eight, nine players. you got guys coming off the bench ready to play in case something's not going right, which we definitely did tonight. And a couple of big moments in the game. Andre Walton found himself on the block posting up and got a couple of good baskets out of that and a couple of fouls out of it. Yeah. Was that in the regular uh, sequence of the offense or was that something special that you decided to go to? No, usually that's in a regular sequence. We do that a lot in practice. Um, Andre's so strong on the block. I mean, he's so strong and he's so quick. He really, uh, he's got a nice fadeaway shot in the post. And if you guard that, then he steps through. Uh, I, he's got, I think, better post moves than what I do. You know, he's, uh, he's tough on the block. And uh, he got some key baskets tonight. Scott Simmons played a particularly a good basketball game, kept you in it, made a crucial three-point basket. I can't say enough about all the contributions that you got, but Shane, we needed more We needed more contributions from Shane tonight. I guess that other night when he was dandy down player of the game, maybe he thought he could rest. Uh, no, it's not that. You know, um, offensively, he was just missing shots. Uh, he was missing open shots, which doesn't happen a lot, but it happened tonight. But uh, I thought he did a pretty good job defensively. Um, the last four or five minutes, he was guarding Couch, who uh, last year was their big gun. This year is their big three-point shooter. I don't even think Couch got a shot off. Um, so there's other ways to contribute, which I felt like he did. But Scott definitely came in and gave us an offensive punch. Exactly. And in Shane's defense, he had some pretty good defense on him also. Yeah. I'm sure they read about him and looked up in the scouting reports and put some pretty good defense on him. Well, Sean, I don't want to keep you from going down and celebrating with the rest of your teammates. Congratulations. And I'm sure I'll be standing here with you a few more times this year. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks. This is Doc, this is Doc Leonard. Thanks, Charles and Sean. Sean, with 29 tonight, 83-78 final for the Dons. This telecast of this IPFW sporting event is copyrighted in the sole possession of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized copying, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or other use of the event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. On behalf of Charles Washington and myself, Doc Leonard, we want to thank all of you for attending and remind you to tune in next Friday night. Or be here, better yet. Well, the Volley Dons game against Long Beach State. Our Dons return in basketball action to against Southern Indiana and Kentucky Wesleyan here on Thursday. The women at 6.05. That's the 4th of February and the 6th of February against Kentucky Wesleyan. Kentucky Wesleyan, we've never beaten Kentucky Wesleyan. We'd like to see a great card out here on Saturday the 6th. So don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 next Friday night at 8 o'clock to see the Long Beach State University 49ers take on our Volley Dons. For Charles Washington, this is Doc Ed Leonard. Goodbye for now. Twenty-four Forest in couch, setting the defense. Four-point lead in the ball. Here we go. Can we get the ball in? We've got a foul in the backcourt. Simmons will be at the line. Two shots. Mr. Graham, the coach from Kentucky State, unhappy, walks away with his folded towel. Maybe all over. 
And Hans tried to back in for defensive purposes. Foul is on Toby Joseph, his fifth. So Joseph fouled out, little fouled out. The Dons finally got the 10 free throws. And here is Scott Simmons shooting two. Keep in mind, Simmons has got 12 points tonight, Charles. It's played well. It's up, it's good. And it's a five point ball game. 20 seconds to go. With this victory, the Dons will move to five and two. Kentucky State will move to five and three. Putting the Dons a half game or a game out of first place. Simmons' second shot is good. He now has 14 points. Our dandy Don will be Sean Gibson. The Gibson boys fight for the rebound. Shane with a rebound. And Shane is going to be fouled. Timeout. Or do we have a timeout? I think they got a timeout before the foul again. 81 75, 11 seconds to go. We'd like to remind you to turn in, tune in to us next Friday evening. Charles and I won't be here because, Charles, <laughs> we'd rather watch volleyball, I think. But at 8 o'clock to watch us play the Long Beach State 49ers on Friday night. And our volleyball team is exciting. Our basketball team is exciting. And we'd like to invite everyone to become a part of the Mastodon Madness here at IPFW. This whole program has just escalated, Ed. Uh, but we need to give a lot of credit to some of the people that started this thing out a long time ago in the years past. Uh, because you couldn't get to this point without having some of those people who struggled through some years earlier. Well, I want to tell you, Charles, I could I could pay you enough for that lead in because two weeks from the night, on Saturday, February 6th, the Mastodons play Kentucky Wesleyan, and we're going to honor our silver anniversary Mastodon team. There's a foul uh, on couch. Andre Walton will be at the line. A frustration foul, 10 seconds, six point Don lead. Hans Ryder coming in for defensive purposes. Marcinac going out. Marcinac had four key first half points. Great contributions all over by the Dons. One in particular, a player that we'd never even mentioned for Danny Don, John Hans Ryder, came in early in this game when the Dons got off to a slow start, set a tone, and got the Dons back into this basketball game. Walton's first free throw is good. Thirteen points now for Walton. He's high at his 14th, 82-75. The Dons lead. Put this one in the bank. Hans Ryder with ten points off the bench. There's Brim for three. It's long. Gibson with a rebound off of Brim. And he said it went off of Gibson. Okay, and Gibson agrees with that one. Good try. And two seconds ago, an eight-point lead. I'll eight agree point lead. Too. Charles, I think we can put this one in the bank. Coach Piazza's team. The only problem is we have to go down there. There's, oh, who else? Forrest with, uh, I guess that was a two at the end of the game. Here's our final, 83-78 for the Dons. Great basketball game, great display, great momentum game, and that's what you're gonna have with uh, good GLVC action, momentum. Whatever team can control the tempo the most and at the most crucial times, those are the teams that are gonna come out on top, and the Dons did that when they had to. Probably a key for the Dons in the second half was Scott Simmons coming in with two three-pointers at crucial times, getting eight points in the second half to give him 14. Andre Walton with six free throws, 10 points in the second half. Andre with 14. Sean Gibson, his typical All-American talent, 29 points. John Hans Ryder with 10. And anytime Marcinac had four. Uh, Doug Rinke, three baskets in the second half. Uh, Murphy with two. But anytime you can get four or five ball players, Charlie, and double figures, we're going to be in good shape. And Rinke made some major contributions in a stretch in that second half. Randall Lane got about six quick points to start out the second half, played a great basketball game, as did all of the IPFW Mastodons. Now this was, we'll be right back for the conclusion after these brief messages.